Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about Solana. So Solana, of course, is one of the assets that's done especially well this year. Solana is up off of the bottom of the lows back in December of 2022. It is up 720%, which is very impressive. So Solana, if you're not familiar, is a layer one blockchain. It is known for being very fast and very cheap to use. So it is one of the chains that really got picked up on with the narrative of an Ethereum killer. So Ethereum being a lot slower and a lot more expensive to use. Solana, especially last cycle, was one of the assets that really benefited from that. And that really helped catapult it to these lofty highs up at around $265. So where might Solana be going next? Recently, just in this day, as I'm recording this on the 7th of December, Solana is up 6%. It's looking like it might be trying to stage a breakout from these year-to-date highs that it put in so far. And you'll notice this red bar that I have on the chart. And this is one of the potential targets that Solana might be looking at. We notice that this is a zone that acted as resistance and support in the past. So it makes sense that it might act as another potential resistance zone if Solana can get back up to that level. So what I want to talk about today is can Solana get back up there? We're going to look at some of our models and see what they're saying. But then if it does get up there, if we do get another leg up, should we think that'll just rip through this potential resistance and just continue on to the upside? Or might there be more chance that it gets bogged down here? Maybe I have to spend some more time consolidating, maybe even correcting before eventually being able to move higher. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's talk about the shorter term outlook first. Can it even push, make a push towards this higher level? So let's talk first about our short-term upside downside potential indicator or UDPI. So this is a risk model that we have that cares about moves that play out over days to weeks. So shorter in its time horizon. And basically higher values mean high risk, lower values mean low risk. And one of the things that's notable when we look at the short-term UDPI for Seoul is that we really ripped up to the upside on terms of short-term risk in this move coming out of September. So basically we realized a lot of the realistic upside potential that the model saw, and then we found a local top up at these levels here, which we were just looking at up at these levels here. But then notably, short-term risk has been cooling off. And this is something that you'd want to see to be able to think that the next leg up might be able to happen. Just look in the past. For example, in this move here, back coming out of the summer of 21, we really ripped to the upside on short-term risk, but then we cooled off and that gave us room for that final push up to what ended up being the ultimate all-time high. Didn't end up being able to realize all the upside potential that might've been plausible there. Put in the top at a pretty high risk level here above three, then came down into the bear market. And then we bottomed out at these really low risk levels down here. And now we've really started to push back into something that looks more like a bull market with this move here. So what this suggests is that short-term risk has cooled off. So if Seoul wants to continue pushing to the upside, it is basically a crude more upside to do so. The model now thinks that there's more plausible upside that's remaining, especially when you weigh it against the downside. It thinks that there's actually a little bit more upside than downside that's plausible in the short term. So the stage could very well be set for that next leg up that maybe ultimately lets Seoul target this range here between around $76 and Route 86 is where I have this zone. Uh, on the chart somewhere in that general ballpark would not be totally surprising given the fact that this has happened so i think it's certainly possible that Seoul can do that if it wants to and i think it's really going to depend if the broader markets remain bullish if bitcoin continues to at the very least not crash if ethereum continues to push up and if we don't see the stock market start to fall off a cliff or anything like that then i think that the conditions could very well be there for Seoul to make that next move in the shorter term time horizon but now let's talk a little bit about kind of the longer term perspectives about Seoul and what might be happening. So to do that, I'm just going to flip over to our long term upside down side potential indicators. So this is our longer term risk model that we have at the channel. And this is basically reactive to moves that play out over months to multiple months, so longer in its time horizon. And what you'll notice here is that it's getting quite overextended. We're up above three on the long term UDPI for Seoul. And so what that might just mean is that if Seoul can push up to the upside, if it can realize that upside and get back up to this range we've been talking about, then that might be actually a place we might expect there to be some fairly strong resistance, that there's limited upside potential that remains. There's not none, right? Three is not five. Five is the top of the scale. There still is more upside that it could realize if it wants to. But we're starting to get up to those levels that we might expect 
a local top to form. And even if that just means some kind of small correction or consolidation before the next leg up, or whatever the case may be, it might just mean that we're not gonna just be able to blow through this resistance without thinking about it. Now it's crypto, anything is possible, but looking at this, if I had to go one way or the other, I would expect that we could have that next leg up, but that we might start expecting some resistance to form at some point once we are up there. And that is my takeaway from this. So obviously not financial advice, you should make your own opinions about the data. That's what I'm looking at right now. Because again, we have to remember that markets don't move straight up forever. And so we had this really impressive move with Solana here, and we could have a continuation of this, but I personally am not expecting us just to go clear off to all-time highs without any kind of correction or consolidation along the way. I wouldn't consider this to be a proper correction or consolidation. This is more of a just uh, flag, a bull flag on a bigger macro move. And you see that happening, like for example, here, here, and here. I would see this being as more like something like that. And then something maybe more like this would be what I'd expect for a longer consolidation or correction. So anything's possible, that's kind of my current outlook based on these data. Now that all being said, let's think beyond that though. Let's think beyond whether or not we can get there and, and just the kind of details about, are we just gonna catch resistance here? Can we go a little bit higher, anything like that? And let's think more about where is Solana in its market cycle? Because I think that's what we really care about. If crypto is going into a new bull market, and that really seems to be what the data is pointing to right now, which is quite exciting, of course, because altcoins tend to do really well in that type of environment. We're no longer in the regime where it all just get crushed against the dollar and against Bitcoin and against Ethereum. But in fact, they can really start to outperform. So let's talk about a data or a model that we can look at that can give us an idea of where Sol is in its market cycle. So that's what we're looking at right here. This is the momentum bias indicator or MBI. It basically quantifies how much momentum is there behind an asset at a given point in time. And bias basically meaning is the momentum biased to the upside where any moves down are quickly bought up and price is just catapulted back to the upside? Or is it biased to the downside where price is really dragged down and any attempts to rally just quickly gets sold off and move back down? And when you're looking at the MBI, you'll see distinct patterns of behavior at different parts of the market cycle. In bull markets, you'll spend a lot more time in the green and in the red, and basically prices are just ripping alongside of it. That's very much a bull market behavior. In a bear market, you'll see the opposite, where you're spending a lot of time in the red, and any attempts to reestablish positive momentum bias get quickly rejected to the downside, and then you ultimately go to your major capitulation event. And we saw that with Solana very clearly back here 2021 into 2022, textbook bear market behavior on the MBI. And again, you see this not just for Sol. Go look at Bitcoin, go look at Ethereum. They will all show the same kind of behavior. But then notably, when you're in that transition out of a bear market into a bull market, you'll see this oscillation around zero. And the reason why this is a bullish thing is that the way that the MBI is calculated is it's actually a Z-score. So zero is the average amount of momentum in Solana, and that's of course positive, given that Solana's price is appreciated massively over its life. And then units above and below are in standard deviation units. So if you're just oscillating around zero, what that means is that you're generally speaking hanging around a positive, in this case, amount of momentum, because that's the average for Solana. And so you'll generally expect price to slowly start moving to the upside in this kind of a thing, or even start to accelerate to the upside. And then that ultimately will often lead to this big bull market type of behavior then, where you oscillate around zero, and then boom, you explode to the upside and you start doing this kind of a thing like we've seen for Sol in the past. So this is very well possibly the beginning of that kind of a thing here, where maybe we're in that big first impulsive move in the cycle, we would expect some kind of longer consolidation, correction, accumulation at some point, and then a continuation. But certainly this is not a bear market look. We are no longer in this regime, I think pretty clearly, just looking at the MBI. We're very clearly in the transition out of the bear, in early bull, and maybe even starting to enter into a more exciting phase of the bull than just that accumulation out of the bear. Because that's really what this range was back through here. This was an accumulation zone out of the bear market heading for the bull market, very clearly shown on the MBI here. And now we've started to do that. We've started to really enter into that bull market behavior. So this is again, very exciting because when altcoins start to do this, when they start going into a bull market, that's when things can get really crazy. If we just look at Solana in the past, we can just see how much it appreciated 
you know, since its inception to its all time high, more or less, we're talking about a 46, almost 47,000% move to the upside from where I calculated there. Crazy move. Now, I personally don't expect Solana to do the same thing again this cycle. It's a much larger market cap asset. It's probably going to have diminishing returns, but it still could do quite nice. I still would expect all-time highs. So none of this is financial advice. You should make your own opinions. But these are some of the things I'm looking at right now that I think it could have some more gas in the tank in the short term, although nothing's guaranteed there. But if it does, we might find some resistance relatively soon. But in some ways, who cares? Even if Solana has to slow down, even has to correct, that could just end up being a massive opportunity if we are indeed in this early bull market that data seems to suggest we are. So if you want to view live data from our models and more, you can do so at our website, PlurityDigital.io. Link is in the description. And of course, none of this is financial advice. You should make your own opinions about this data and where you think Seoul is going next. And of course, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us on X. A lot of updates about our models and more over there.